Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into a crucial concept in digital forensics and that's chain of custody. As someone who studied digital forensics at Champlain University and served as a federal agent for 18 years, I know firsthand how critical it is to handle digital evidence properly to ensure it holds up in court. Basically, in my time as a federal investigator, I worked on cases where even the smallest mistake in evidence handling can make or break an investigation. Whether it's tracking cyber criminals, conducting forensic analysis on seized devices, or presenting findings in court, maintaining a clear and documented chain of custody is essential for ensuring evidence is credible, admissible, and untampered with. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through what chain of custody is, why it matters, and how digital forensics professionals ensure evidence integrity from collection to courtroom. Let's get started. Whether you're in cybersecurity, law enforcement, or IT security, understanding how to preserve, document, and transfer digital evidence is critical for any investigation. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what the chain of custody is and why it matters, the steps involved in maintaining a proper chain of custody, how improper handling can invalidate evidence in a legal case, and real world examples of digital forensic investigations. So by the end of this video, you have a solid understanding of how to handle digital evidence professionally and securely. Let's begin with what exactly chain of custody is. Simply put, chain of custody refers to the documented process of collecting, handling, and preserving digital evidence. Every time evidence changes hand, there must be a record of number one, who collected it, number two, where it was stored, number three, who accessed it and why, and number four, when and how it was transferred. This process ensures that the evidence remains authentic, untampered, and admissible in court. Let me give you an example. Imagine law enforcement seizing a suspect's laptop. If it's not properly logged and tracked, a defense attorney would argue that the evidence was altered or compromised, even if it wasn't. This could get the case thrown out of court. That's why chain of custody is essential for something like this. So how do we ensure that digital evidence is properly handled and admissible? Let me give you a step-by-step -step breakdown. Number one, you do evidence collection. This is where you secure the scene and identify digital devices that may contain evidence. Also, you photograph or document everything before touching any device. Back in the old days, we used to go in and unplug everything and start taking things apart before we did these photographs. That was way back in the early 90s. We don't do it like that anymore. Also use write blockers to prevent altering evidence when copying data. We didn't realize that when we unplugged the machines, we were already altering data by just turning off the machine and going through the process of shutdown. Number two is documentation and labeling. Every piece of evidence should have a unique identifier, like a serial number or a case ID or something like that. You document the exact date, time, and location where it's collected. And you have to document who collected it and their role in the investigation. This is critical. If documentation is missing, the evidence could be challenged in court and it likely will. Number three is secure storage and access control. Evidence should be stored in a secure forensic lab with access logs. Only authorized personnel should have access to that evidence. Any access or transfer must be logged with, like we see in investigations, the who, what, when, where, and why. Number four is transfer and handling of evidence. When evidence is transferred between investigators or departments, a detailed log must be with it. Digital forensics teams use tamper-proof bags and sealed numbers to ensure no unauthorized modifications. Chain of custody forms should accompany any movement of that evidence. Without these precautions, an opposing attorney could argue that the evidence was tampered with or mishandled, leading to serious consequences for your case. Let's talk about what happens when the chain of custody is broken or improperly documented. So let me give you a case study, the Casey Anthony trial. In this case, digital forensic evidence, search history logs, was mishandled, leading to questions about its validity. Because of forensic mistakes and lack of clear documentation, certain pieces of evidence were not used in court. If digital evidence isn't handled correctly, even the strongest case can fall apart, and I've seen it happen. The next case study is the Silk Road investigation. So investigators follow proper chain of custody to seize and analyze digital evidence from the dark web marketplace Silk Road. Because of strict adherence to forensic protocols, the evidence was admissible in court, leading to convictions of those involved. 
Proper documentation makes all the difference between securing justice and losing a case due to mishandling. Let's talk about some best practices for chain of custody in digital forensics. To ensure digital evidence remains legally defensible, here are best practices every investigator should follow. First, use forensic tools. Always use right blockers, forensic imaging tools like NCASE and FTK or autopsy to collect data without modification. Next, maintain access logs. Keep detailed logs for anyone who accesses or moves digital evidence. Next is timestamp everything. Date and time every action taken with digital evidence. Next is verify and hash the data. Use cryptographic hashing like SHA-256 or MD5 to prove data integrity. Next is train your team. Ensure all personnel handling digital evidence understand proper chain of custody protocols and legal implications. By following these best practices I just gave you, you can ensure that digital evidence is authentic, untampered, and legally admissible. So let's recap. Chain of custody is critical for ensuring digital evidence holds up in court. Every step, collection, storage, transfer must be documented and secured. Mishandling evidence can lead to criminals walking free due to legal loopholes. Again, as someone who studied digital forensics at Champlain University and as a former federal agent with 18 years of experience, I know firsthand how crucial that chain of custody is in criminal investigations, cybersecurity incidents, and court cases. Properly handling evidence can mean the difference between a successful prosecution or a case getting thrown out. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe for more cybersecurity insights, and drop your questions in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Have you encountered challenges with digital evidence handling? Let's discuss this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.